Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Vibrantly Me, the masterclass series on manifesting the vibrantly badass you, seeing the beautiful in every situation, and powering up your life experience. Your mission today is to soak up one actionable step or mindset from our incredible resource that will take you one step closer to a more vibrant you. I'm your host, Marina Becker, and joining us today is the wonderful Janet Dewar. Janet is a medical intuitive and master energy healer and uses her multidimensional gifts of perce uh, perception, deep connection with the company of heaven, and a masterful use of wide range of healing techniques to provide transformative results for her clients. People who work with Janet report rapid shifts in health conditions, pain reduction, powerful emotional shifts, more harmonious relationships, and feeling empowered. Janet has supported over 1,500 people from over 43 countries. Janet, it's so wonderful to have you. Welcome to Vibrantly Me. Uh, thank you, Marina. This is uh, just delightful. I've been looking forward to getting to chat with you and share with your audience. Me too, because um, you've got a really interesting way of looking at the body. Um, being a medical intuitive, I would love for you to share kind of what that is and what you do and maybe how you even got here. Yeah, okay. So how did I get here? Maybe it's a good place to start. I had a fairly traditional life and was self-employed as a management consultant for many years traveling the Western United States and uh, Western Canada. And then I joined corporate life and worked my way through various business management positions, including managing the sales compensation and real estate department and doing business turnarounds and uh, ended up in Oregon, where we live now, in uh, financial control in high-tech, publicly traded companies. So I've done the corporate life, and then my own body uh, and soul got my attention with the health issue. I had one hip, both hips in great deal of pain, one hip replaced, and decided, wait a minute, I think I remember we can heal ourselves. So that set me on a journey to go within and meditate. And, and I have now healed my second hip of severe osteoarthritis and now walk and do anything I need to do. Go, go walk on cement for three hours without, without that feeling like torture on my body <laughs> and have healed many other things, including restoring my memory and my night vision is now completely healed, a variety of things. Once I said, wait, I can heal myself and chose I am improving my health and started asking questions, then I was guided step by step. So what opened up for me was my uh, ability both to receive messages from myself, but also to receive messages and information for other people. And that's where the medical intuition comes in. So now what I do is assist people whose bodies are getting their attention in some way with a symptom or some kind of disharmony. And we track and trace the root cause of that, which usually isn't even in the physical body. It's suppressed emotion. It's some trauma from another timeline. Um, it can be a variety of things, ancestral information that comes down the DNA and needs to be cleared on behalf of the ancestors. So by working with the subtle bodies of energy, we're able to get the shift required, which was the whole reason that the body was presenting a symptom to get someone's attention, that there was more going on that required their, their loving attention. So you say that, um, you know, you, you were like, okay, I remember that the body can heal itself, right? So well, what's the first step in your process? Because you also kind of mentioned, I mean, there's, there's a lot there to unpack because ultimately what you're saying is that pain that you're feeling is, starts elsewhere before it manifests itself physically. Yeah. So the first thing you would want to do, people typically have symptoms and they'll say, oh, this is going on, this is going on, this is not fun, I'm not enjoying this. I would like something different. And uh, the first thing to do is to not to focus on getting rid of what you're experiencing, but rather to make a choice uh, of what kind of health you would love to enjoy. So for example, instead of me going 
uh, or anyone with hips or joints or knees that are troubling them, rather than going, I wish this would go away and I no longer had this itis in my joint, rather for them to say, I am choosing to be strong and flexible and for my joints to support me joyfully. I am skipping, I am playing tennis again, whatever it is that a person would like to enjoy in their life, climbing stairs easily with no discomfort, you know, to remember that we are powerful creators. So that's where it starts is to choose what would I love to experience? So I was asking questions like that. What would it take? I would say, great line. What would it take for my memory to improve? What would it take for my eyesight to improve? What would it take for me to have strong and flexible joints once again? And that's what started because when we ask a question in the asking, it is given. So when we ask a question, we are activating all the powers of the universe to guide us step by step to what it is that we're now choosing to regenerate our body. So you're leaning not only on your um, kind of your symptoms, but also on your intuition, because when you ask these questions, you then kind of have to listen for the answers. Yes, exactly. And if you ask a question, it you don't necessarily, when I said, what would it take for my vision to improve? I didn't instantly get the answer. <laughs> uh, but then what happens is you'll be in the shower, or you'll be out in the grocery store, and everybody keeps saying kale, kale, kale. And you keep hearing this word and you go, well, apparently <laughs> I should be eating more kale. And then I'd go, well, I would eat it, but I don't know how to cook it. So then I'd say, what would it take for some delicious recipes for kale to show up? And then that would show up. So you keep asking questions and asking for the support that you require and pay attention to a conversation you find yourself next to, a couple of people in the grocery store. Once I said, what would it take for me to learn how to cook kale? Guess what? <laughs> Two ladies show up in the grocery store right next to me and have a conversation about, oh, I love to cook it this way. And I just go, thank you. <laughs> Answer received. So it's that being in the flow and relaxing and being playful, asking or making choices, what we would like to experience, asking questions, what would it take for that to show up? And then being willing to pay close attention to where spirit is guiding you step by step to what it is that you need to do and shift. And then as far as the, um, the energy that's suppressed. So yes, a whole lot of our physical health improves dramatically if we would just eat what we, we are being guided to, you know, and eat the, the foods that have more color and more minerals and, you know, more life force in them. Because then when we ingest that life force, we have more life force to work with for our bodies to heal. Uh, but in addition, um, you know, what I found in my hips was a lot of suppressed sadness and not feeling supported. And so I needed to cry those tears out, be, be present with that emotion. And when I did so and released it, I found myself feeling lighter and brighter and more joyful. And when we're feeling lighter and brighter and more joyful, guess what? We don't have this, one of the forces of physics is gravity, the weight of the world on our shoulders, you know, pouring, pressing us down. But there's another uplifting energy, which is levity. So I was working with a client um, just a week ago, and she was having issues in her joints, hips, which was why she was guided to me because she heard my hip story. And I did some work with her energy and we brought in more of this levity energy, which lifts us up and feels light. And she says, my gosh, Janet, I feel two inches taller. And by working with that energy, every vertebrae in her spine is, you know, going up a little bit, shifting the energy. Well, now she doesn't have so much compression pressing down on her her hip joint so that there wasn't so much push on the nerves and the cartilage so that she didn't have as much pain. So we can really work with our energy as well, but we need to be willing to, you know, if there's some emotion there, you ask body, 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 
have I got some suppressed emotion in here that I needs my loving attention? And then you find yourself uh, experiencing the tears and maybe grief or whatever it might be, anger. A lot of people who have things in their bodies that end in itis, inflammation of the something or other. Uh, well, what is inflammation? We might ask the question, what are you so inflamed about? And now we're targeting into what's the anger, what's the resentment, what's the rage, what's the bitterness that a person maybe hasn't addressed yet. And they haven't flooded it with love and forgiveness and allowed it to, to pass and be dissolved back into love so that they can once again no longer have that suppressed energy. And guess what? The itis in our body um, improves and we heal. Yeah, it's like a, it's um, more like a conversation with your body and also your spirit, because it's um, instead of like you said earlier saying, you know, I need to get rid of this. It's more of like, what is my body saying? And I love that you're also talking about like this suppressed emotion because um, partly, partly everything that we are going through, we're storing it also in our body. And sometimes when there is something that your body is trying to tell you, you're just like, I don't, you know, I just want this to go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could, uh, well, we resist persists. <laughs> yeah. And, and so we need to lovingly be willing to be present with pay attention to what's going on within what body, 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 I'll talk to my body and get my clients to talk to theirs, body, 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 what's going on? What is the emotion that is underlying this health experience? What is it that I need to be present with? And uh, a person will say, oh my gosh, I'm feeling this big wave of sadness. Great, okay, so now finally this energy is rising up and going up and leaving um, because we are giving it our loving attention energy flows where attention goes. So when we go, oh, maybe I should get really quiet, put my hand on my heart, go within and say, inner child, is there some emotion there that you would like me to be present with? And just doing that brings light and energy in which can allow then the energy to go, ah, at last you're willing to be quiet enough to see me and feel me, then we can heal me. What we're feeling, we're healing. Well, what about, so, you know, a lot of people, when they hear that you can heal these like severe aches and pains and chronic illnesses and chronic pains through the power of your own energy and listening to your body, we're so conditioned to rely on medicine. And a lot of times it's conflicting. Do you work with people and how, what do you tell them about, you know, how to, how to decipher what's, you know, what's what? Well, I'm not a, uh, registered healthcare practitioner of any form. So I don't diagnose or treat a condition. What I do if a person is experiencing pain is to help them dialogue with the body, find the underlying energies that the pain is really the body saying, look here, look here, please put some attention here. And so when we can get quiet and say, well, what is the message that the body has there? then and focus on it, clients will erupt in tears as I'm working with them over the, over the uh, web call or phone uh, all over the world. And that is that stored energy that was kind of trapped in that joint or in that part of the body. Um, I had a client one time, we were tracing low back pain. And when I went into it and we tracked back, oh, it's not from this timeline, but some of it's ancestral. And we went back and found that it was related to her own personal experiences in other timelines and ancestral experiences through her, the women in her line who had had um, great pain and difficulty in childbirth. And what we've heard of back labor, you know, what's called back labor. And when we went and put attention on that and then using the energy um, healing gifts that I have, then we were able to go, that's where it's coming from, cleared it. She said, my gosh, Janet, who would have known that pain, she said that I've had lower back pain for a long time, traced back to generational uh, trauma in her familial maternal line 
about difficulty and traumas and you know losing children and horrible birth experiences that were stuck in her cellular memory. So we cleared that up and she said, just that one session in an hour, she said the pain went from a 10 to a four. Wow. Because we brought in the attention needed to transmute and release that energy and she didn't need to carry it any longer. And this is almost like, I'm pretty sure that there's recent studies that show that it is stored in our DNAs. These, um, you know, things that have traumatic experiences, pains, uh, even experiences through ancestors and, you know, even cultural, like, uh, you know, uh, movement of, of tribes or of a type of a people. So um, yeah. it's amazing to tap into that and to clear that. So, you know, when a part of me is like, well, how much stuff do I, you know, is this my job? How much do I have to, you know, how much is on me, you know, for, from like thousands of years, you know, what, um, how do you, how do you talk to that about, um, the layers? Yeah, it, some people can find this healing process overwhelming. Uh, it, it helps to keep our sense of humor and to remember that our souls will never sign up for more of a journey than we can manage. And that often, uh, like for me, the pain that I had in my hips, it was about not feeling supported. Well, that came from many themes. It came from my male ancestors who felt that they didn't, they didn't have the means or the method to make the income that was required to support their family. It came from women uh, ancestors and my own experiences in other timelines, but the women ancestors who found themselves, husband goes off to war, does not come back. And now they've got a farm and children and so forth to manage. Um, so when we go back and we can see some of these glimpses of these experiences and just hold compassion in our heart and love for our ancestors who experienced that, then we dissolve the underlying energies. So typically, you know, people don't get 27 different health concerns <laughs> to address. They get, you know, one big one getting their attention and they just need to be patient and go deep and, and take advantage of a person like myself who can support them um, in, in getting the insights needed. But we can do so much of our own healing work my night vision completely cleared up after I was guided. I asked that question, what, you know, would it take for me to have great vision again? And I was just guided to eat this, do that, get the sunglasses off, by the way, uh, was one of the things. Um, and how did that happen? Someone stole my sunglasses. What a perfect way to make sure I didn't wear them. And so then I started getting more light in my eyes and my training my eyes to adjust light, dark, light, dark. And so now I don't wear sunglasses. I haven't worn them for 10 years. And uh, I'm perfectly fine if there's, I'm driving and the sun is streaming in through the windshield. No problem. My eyes just adjust. I might use my visor, but, but that's fine. And by learning, um, and there were many things that I was guided to eat and some essential oils and different kinds of things. I just follow the breadcrumbs. And, and so my night vision is spectacular. I can drive at dark two hours on a two lane highway with cars coming at me. And I'm just so joyful. Thank you eyes, you know, you adjust so well. And I just followed the instructions I was given. I think that's, uh, that's a big part of it is the, you know, following the intuition. And once you start really trusting it, because, you know, a lot of these things that, you know, you talk about like sunglasses, you know, you really open up my eyes just now. No, no, no pun intended, but that's amazing. Right. Because we do, we wear sunglasses because we think that it helps our eyes. Um, you know, anything else that you found that is a total contradiction to what we thought? I mean, that's a, that's a brilliant little nugget. <laughs> uh I will just say that 90% of what we've been taught is false. <laughs> so on our journey, it helps to say, spirit, my God self, spirit, please guide me to the truth. Please guide me to the truth. I, if I have beliefs which don't serve me are not true, uh, and I'll give an example, a lot of people believe in aging. 
they believe that in your 30s, this will start to deteriorate. And then in your 40s, this will happen. And by your 50s, you might expect this deterioration. And by your 60s and by 80s, you know, you're going to be going around with a cane. Well, that can occur and does occur to many people who have ingested a lot of chemicals and pesticides and didn't eat organic and didn't take care of themselves, smoked, drank, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Um, it can occur because we're not treating the body as the temple that it is to keep it pure. And it will occur if you believe it will occur. And so as soon as you go, well, wait a minute, I rejected aging. And I said, no, I'm youthing. And people, someone just commented, actually saw a picture of me recently. And she says, my gosh, Janet, you look 10 years younger. And I'm 66 years of age. And I know that I'm going to look better and better and better uh, because I keep cleaning my body up of, you know, I've been eating organic now for 10 years. And that was after 35 years of two glasses of Chardonnay every day of my life. And which trashed my liver, of course. So then I had to, you know, cleanse all of that and purify all of that. And my body just keeps going, thank you, thank you. We're loving the kale, <laughs> the kale and the berries and the sweet potatoes and uh, all of the foods that are just loaded with what the body really desires and requires. I don't think I actually knew your age until just now. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. And is it, do you think, so is it true for everyone? Like, you know, I know you've mentioned kale, you know, several times. So is that something that's like a all for everyone or is this a, you know, individual person would probably have their own recipe for success. And um, we, we are, our bodies are different and whatever we're healing from and recovering from you know, whatever abuse or difficulties or uh, that they've encountered may require different remedies. Uh, a person who's healing a, a gut that's got holes in it, leaky due to uh, too much consumption of pesticides, wrong kinds of foods. Uh, well, then that's a special journey to get that, get that gut healed up and strong so that it can absorb things and receive the nutrients. But for people who don't have uh, a really disturbed gut situation, kale um, has more antioxidants, more phytonutrients, more magnesium, more calcium, and it ranks 1,000 out of 1,000 possible of the best top food you could ingest and put in your body. Uh, and you do want to eat organic because it can be sprayed with quite a number of things in the field. But you can also just buy uh, $3 worth of seeds and grow it in a pot at home and have all the kale you could possibly eat for you and your family just in just in one good size pot on your, uh, you know, in your yard somewhere, or even on your balcony if you're an apartment dweller. So when you say I am choosing to heal, I am choosing to youth in my body, I am choosing to purify it. I am choosing to love myself enough so that this beautiful body lasts another 60, 80 years because we can easily live to be 120 years if we choose it and then act accordingly, follow all the guidance. Um, there's just so much we can accomplish just cleaning our bodies up physically. But then we, and what you'll find is once you start juicing or eating more green foods and giving yourself nourishment, well, then, yes, the emotion comes up and people go, well, I went on this healthy food thing and all of a sudden I find myself crying more. Why? Because our frequency is going up with the good food and getting the toxins out. What is that causing? It's causing more light and love to come in. What is that doing? It's saying, look over here, there's some sadness in your heart. And so the sadness comes up. We're not getting sad, we're releasing sad. We're not getting angry, we're releasing anger. So it pays to learn how to be gentle and acknowledge that emotion is energy in motion. And it's, so it's energy that's become stuck and that now starts vibrating and starts moving. And our, I'll say it literally, it comes up. Our stuff comes up and people will say, why? Where is all this sadness coming from? 
I said, it could be, belongs to, you know, six generations back and all the stuff you experienced in your other timelines. That's, you don't have to know what it's from. You just have to be willing to feel it and be patient with yourself and loving. And then you'll notice the next day you feel much lighter. I think that's a big key too, right? You don't always have to know um, and don't judge and don't try to examine because that almost like brings that, you know, you're talking about bringing this energy up into the higher frequencies. When you try to analyze, it's almost like you're bringing it back down. You're bringing this weight to it and, and, and stress. It's all about just enjoying it, releasing. And I love the, the spin that you put on it because it really is, it's not, I am, it's like you're releasing something. Um, mm -hmm. And it's all about the mindset and how you perceive it. So um, the goal is to, you know, release and stress less about it and not let it weigh you down and make you worry even more, right? So that's beautiful. I like the, that you said that. And Janet, you've said already so many wonderful things. Is there anything else you can, for those people that are watching that really want to um, start accessing, uh, regenerating their body or start accessing what they're experiencing whether it's pain or energy or, you know, any of these symptoms, they want to kind of flip it around. What's one piece of advice that you can leave them with? To be patient with yourself, to be compassionate with yourself, uh, and to be curious and just say, okay, if, if this symptom is here for me, it's happening for me, not to me, then what is it that I'm supposed to learn? What is it that I'm supposed to get curious and go within and get quiet and say, I'm choosing to heal this fully. Help me, spirit, my inner self, guidance team, help me know what to do to shift and what I need to pay attention to inside. And you'll find emotion, you'll find unkind, unloving thoughts that you've been thinking about yourself that are not loving. And they're not new thoughts, they're old suppressed thoughts. So you just say, oh, well, gee, that's not a very loving thought. Okay, what would be a more loving way to, to address myself, to speak to myself? So it really is a journey of healing, which is to just be patient, go within, get curious, and you got to be willing to feel. You got to be willing to feel because what we're feeling, we're healing. And it's what we have not wanted to feel before that we said, oh, I don't have time to feel this grief. Someone died or my animal companion died and I'm busy and I don't want to feel it. It's going to hurt too much. Well, your body will save it for you until yeah, you're yeah. ready. <laughs> don't run so, away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Running away doesn't work. <laughs> it often just gets tucked into the back of the energy field out of sight, out of mind, and will require your attention at some point. So those are my, those are my suggestions. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. No, it's wonderful. And um, before we go, I would love for you to share a generous gift that you're giving everyone who's participating in Vibrantly Me. So to be Vibrantly Me, we would like lovely high energy. And there are some, uh, an interesting thing about a specific color of foods and plants and herbs that if you use these foods, consume them, will boost your energy, will bring in the minerals you require and will support your kidney energy, which gets a bit beat up, <laughs> used up if you've been through a lot in your life, a, a lot of stress or challenges in your life. So I have created a list of foods that will restore your energy that share some of the secrets. And so if uh, people would like to receive that, it's simple, but it's very powerful. And uh, by clicking on the link and entering your information, you'll immediately get an email from me, which will share about these, uh, these specific foods that can help boost your energy. So restore your energy with these foods is the gift. I was um, sorry, I was saying it's tremendous uh, information, really powerful. So, I mean, and it, it, you can really feel the change after you start kind of um, inputting the things that help you, help you regenerate, help you feel better. And so 
Um, it's going to be a very, very beautiful gift. So thank you. Thank you, Janet. And thank you everyone for watching. Jen, it's been ha uh, amazing having you. It's a lot of wisdom. And uh, for everyone who's watching, thank you for, for checking us out. And um, please stay tuned for more wonderful speakers on Vibrantly Me. Thank you.